So as you saw before, I'm harvesting uh, ferrite 2 oxide by using contained salt water bottles. And uh, here we've got a pretty good harvest of this stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to play with some crystal methods of storage. So let's take off the magnet and mix her up. Now I'm going to try three various things. So I'm going to get rid of some of this. And we're going to take a small amount, and we're going to boil her down. And then we're going to see what we get if we uh, boil down a higher concentration. Last time we did a much uh, a much lighter concentration. This time we should get some uh, darker crystals. Et voila! Okay, now for the next one, we're going to mix it up. We're going to do two more. So we're going to divide this into two. Get it good and mixed up. Split it. It's a little heavy on this side. More or less. Okay. And now we're going to boil this one down with a whole bunch of vinegar added to it. Now, vinegar crystallizes, but it also burns to the best of my knowledge. So we'll see what we get. And we'll let that boil down. And this one we're going to boil down and then add the vinegar much more slowly and at a lower temperature as this one cools off, first boiling it down to salt. And we'll see what that gives us. Okay, it's getting pretty concentrated so I lowered the heat and I'm going to try to boil it off a lot slower now. Okay, we're starting to get some crystals now, so I'm going to uh, turn the heat down a little more and I'm going to start to apply the vinegar. As you can see, it broke up and dissolved all the crystals. Okay, so what's happened is the uh, salt crystals all just dissolved away right right away because the uh, vinegar is too dilute. There's a lot of water in there, and I just ended up with the sediment all collecting on the bottom. And I'm not trying to test the efficacy of locking it on the bottom of a container under a layer of crystallized salt because my guess is burying it under salt works just fine. Um, so I want to get it back mixed up, so I turn the heat back up. I'm going to let it boil a little. And uh, we'll just try turning the heat down slowly and try not to burn that little bit of uh, acetic acid I've put in there. I haven't put much this time either, so uh, let's see if we can try to avoid burning it. And it started crystallizing before a roaring boil started, so we still got sediment. So we're just going to try mixing that up and see what happens.
So while considering the result of the second test with the burnt vinegar, I was actually wondering if maybe this could be used to turn iron 3 oxide red rust into iron 2 oxide black rust. Now this is not based simply on the idea that this is black. Uh, it's black because of carbon residue. Uh, the idea is that as the uh, vinegar burns, it's going to want to consume 2 oxygen. Uh, that's kind of why it's leaving a bunch of carbon residue. Uh, so maybe we can uh, convince it to take the oxygen off the iron 3 oxide. I'm not sure how tightly it's bonded on there, and I haven't done the math, but let's just give this a go. Let's, uh, let's boil down the, uh, the iron 3, and then start adding a bunch of vinegar as we go. And we'll burn it off and see what happens. Okay, as you can see the level's gone up, I've added some vinegar to it now. Okay, so here's what we got from uh, the rust and vinegar burn off. Um, it, there's a little bit of a red tinge to it, but it's mostly black. And uh, now that doesn't mean anything. So let's uh, let's try dissolving it and uh, see what we get. Now it's rather burnt up, so it's going to take some work here. It's not dissolving very well. It's going to take some work. Alright, this has taken a lot of work here, but I've uh, scratched it up pretty good. I think I got the particles uh, broken up pretty good. Let's transfer them into a bigger container and get a look at my work. Oh, I missed a lot. Okay, well, let's live with what we got. And now let's see. If we can get any reaction to the bag, oh my god, we do. I don't know if you can see. They even want to come up out of the water. Now, it's hard to see on the camera, but um, they are reacting. Wow, I got some. I'm actually surprised. I was expecting to get mostly iron acetate. Um, now, I'm not sure if iron acetate is at ferromagnetic. I'm not sh I don't think that it is. But... I think I got plenty of iron 2 oxide in there. So I've just diluted it with a lot of water to clear it up and to let us see what's in there. And we can see these big black chunks that are left over from the burn. And now if we place the bottle over the magnet, we can very quickly see them all collect right up to the magnet. So they are ferromagnetic. Now, I'm not 100% sure that's iron 2 oxide yet, but I'm thinking it might be. I'm not sure if iron acetate or any of the iron acetate forms are ferromagnetic. I'm going to have to go look into that. So here's another look at what we got with a thinner dish. And as you can see, these things are very ferromagnetic. So we got something here. Um, I'm hoping it is iron 2 oxide. So after I dry it out, I end up with this black powdery stuff like this. Now let's dump it on the table here. And let's use a magnet. And as you can see, it reacts. It doesn't react extremely strongly, and it kind of jumps around. Now that's probably because it's an odd-shaped particles with all the carbons, so it uh, when it tries to pull it, it kind of bounces or something. Uh, that's my best guess so far. Now, I'm not entirely sure it's iron 2 oxide. It could be some kind of iron acetate or something that is ferromagnetic, but I think it's iron 2 oxide mixed with some carbon compounds. And, uh, 
it appears that we can make uh, ferromagnetic particles out of vinegar and iron 3 oxide. And leaving a bit of the wet stuff on the bottom of the glass jar produces quite a nice laser effect when uh, shown through, similar to those uh, frosted glass discs. So here's the first result. This is salt boiled down quickly. And as you can see, we got a little bit of a denser concentration on the bottom, but it did turn out quite marble-like, which is kind of what I was going for, mixed in nice and tight. So we'll see how that one does. The next one is the vinegar burn-off, and uh, it just turned out black, pitch black. But uh, as we saw that with the other vinegar burn-off, it can be used to turn uh, iron 3 oxide into iron 2 oxide. So maybe if I lost any during the boil down, the burn-off might catch it and bring it back for me. And then this is finally with the slower um, crystallization. There was a little bit of vinegar added at the end, which contributes to the formation of the crystals on the top, or the style of the crystals anyways. But uh, as you can see on the bottom, because the boil was so low, uh, it just all fell to the bottom. So we'll see how well that, that preserves it. I imagine it'll do quite well. So here we have our three results, and uh, we'll uh, see how they do over time. I'll uh, post a video later when I've uh, got some uh, test results for how well they store over time.